Hey, uh, Donovan here, and in this video I want to go over how to create your own custom line spline primitive using scene nodes. Um, and uh, just as a heads up, this is mostly an excuse so that I can talk about iteration and looping and uh, things like creating a custom UI and encapsulating a node. Um, there are lots of great solutions in Cinema 4D already for quickly creating a line spline. Um, and uh, I'll just go ahead and dive into this. So this is, if, you know, if you're an end user, probably not the most exciting thing for you. Uh, but if you're a scene nodes uh, curious technical director, um, I'm going to be going over a lot of concepts that should be helpful to you. So uh, first things first, uh, don't reinvent the wheel. So um, for that, uh, what I would say is if there is already a thing that you need, don't try and make it. So just first do a, a sanity check to see whether or not Cinema already has a solution for this problem. Uh, I'm going to immediately break my own advice here. Uh, we're going to be reinventing one heck of a wheel, but let me show you uh, what is available to you already. So in classic Cinema, you can add a... Uh, an inside, and just by adjusting the number of sides down to two, you actually get a very uh, useful, easy to work with uh, line segment. So you can get a two point spline pretty easily there. You've also got another option, which is something called the tracer. So if you add a tracer, the tracer allows you to add a, a couple of nulls inside of it, and then it will draw a spline between those, you can choose to connect all objects, and now you've got a very easy to manipulate uh, line with interactive points. So those are two really good solutions. There's also the most spline, and the most spline generator, if we take a look at this, has got a ton of crazy powers. You can adjust the length, you can uh, do things like even angle it and adjust the number of copies and uh, add a curve or a bend to it. So um, if you're just trying to get a line that you can work with in classic cinema, then uh, you can pretty much skip this video because there's a lot of great options already. If, however, you're trying to uh, learn how to use uh, iteration and looping, how to construct spline geometry from scratch, how to build your own UI or encapsulate a note, then this video is for you. So let's go ahead and go over this process. And uh, last but not least, I'm going to even show you that even in scene nodes, uh, there is a, you know, a don't reinvent the wheel option, which is if you go to uh, your example scenes, go down here to features, find scene nodes, and inside of scene nodes, uh, there are a series of uh, example files, one of which is this one right here. And inside of here is a replace me with your spline. And it's a simple spline primitive. And this is basically what we're going to build with a few more doodads. So lots of uh, already great things for you to, to, to jump off with if you don't want to follow along. But to start from scratch, to build a line from scratch, I'm going to first create a, uh, a nodes spline object. So I'm going to hit shift C to open my commander. I'm going to search for nodes spline and it's this one right here and this is what you want to do if you want to create your own spline primitive uh, next to build a spline to, to create one from scratch we use something called uh, spline assemble or the assemble spline node and you see here that it's got a geometry output which we can manually connect out here or i can select this and tap the q key to connect it uh, which is the same thing as clicking on output geometry here the inputs for a simple spline are points, segments, tangents, and corners. And this is if you want to make a Bezier spline. Now, uh, by default, I'm going to want to make a linear spline just because they're sort of simpler to work with. You don't have to worry about tangents or any of that. So I'm just going to make a linear spline. And we need a points array as a minimum, and uh, a segments array is optional. So let's build up an array of points for this. So I'm going to choose to um, search for array might help. There's a lot of options in here and I just I know because I know there's one called build array which is what I want and uh, here I now need to select the type of my array. So what am I making? Well I can look at uh, my points right here and I see that it is an array of vector 64 or an array of vectors. I can click on my build array over here and the element type so what the individual item is is a vector. So now I've got uh, an array of these 
that I can pipe into my assemble spline. And if I was to make this editable uh, and look at my points, you would see that we actually have a spline with four points, all of them in the exact same location. So uh, all we really need to do is go hit undo a few times and let's tweak our build array. And I'm gonna get rid of all but two and I'm gonna to choose uh, to name one start and name one end. Uh, we could name one A or B, it doesn't really uh, super matter. And um, I now want to uh, expose these uh, the start in values so that a user that selects the spline can uh, see and adjust them. So to do that, I'm gonna double click in here and choose um, IO which you can find under user interface, right? So all of the IO nodes, and one of those is IO vector. And uh, because I want this to have units to it, like centimeters, uh, I'm gonna choose the size option. So I'm gonna drag out size twice, and I'm gonna name one of these uh, start. I'm gonna name one of these end. And we see that we've got two points in the exact same location. I'm going to adjust start here to be 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to plug that into the start here and into the end here. And now I've got a two-point spline, and I can adjust the uh, positions of these points right here. Now, if I want to get a little bit trickier, I can. But let's save this scene. If we haven't yet, I'm just going to do a save incremental. Um, I might also call this line spline. And um, what I want to do now is to actually be able to create multiple points along this spline and uh, have them show up over time. So, or, or rather, um, have a start point, an end point, and multiple points in between. So what I'm going to do now is define the number of those points that I want. So I'm going to add an, another IO option, IO count, and drag that out. And so now I've got count. And as I look at my UI, I've got a default count of three, which is more than we have here with the build array. So what I want to do somehow is to, let me go to object mode here. I can doodle here. I want to have a starting point. I want to have an ending point, And I want to take a certain number of steps, boop, 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 in between to get to my ending point. And so what we can do is figure out a vector from A to B, from start to end here, and uh, adjust its sort of uh, scale or length along the distance. That's one option. Uh, or another is to just simply uh, interpolate the position of these two points uh, based on a 0 to 1 value uh, for these ticks. So in my line spline, I've got my start, my end value. I like the uh, mix or LERP, uh, linear interpolation you might know this as, to mix between my start and my end points. If I click on this mix node, I can change the data type to be vector to match that of uh, the options here. I'm gonna choose start and I'm gonna choose end and I'm gonna get rid of this build array and instead I'm going to uh, what's called assemble a uh, a collection or assemble my uh, individual elements here into an array. So for that, I want to assemble collection. And assemble collection allows me to create a, an array sort of from scratch based on an iteration. So uh, this, is a, this is a pretty shaggy explanation, but uh, to create an iteration, right? I, I, I want to go with a count. Um, so I'm going to choose a range node. So if you've worked with Python, uh, this would be the equivalent we're trying to do of, you know, uh, 4i in range uh, count, something like that, right? So we're trying to do that equivalent. I'm going to take count and wire it into the end value here. And this is uh, really end before. So uh, the count, I think, is 3. And the last number we would get to is 2. And now what I want to do is, um, for now, I'm just going to directly type this range, which you can think of as the index, into this. And now I need to turn this uh, iteration 
into uh, an array. So I'm going to change my assemble collection into a type array, so structure array. And I'm going to change the data type here from float to vector because I'm now trying to make an array of vectors. I'm going to connect my individual item here. And then there's a couple of things that you see. Um, there's this sort of like uh, curly bra bracket with three dots, which indicates uh, the start of a scope, um, which you can kind of think of as like, it, again, in that for loop um, example, it's like creating uh, an iteration, everything at the start of the iteration to the end of the iteration. We're sort of closing off the iteration by connecting these two together. And um, so there we go. And now I'm going to take my assemble collection and plug it into points. And um, just to see what's going on, I'm going to set this to 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to set this to 100, 100, 100. I have a feeling, though, that if I set my sphere here to 100, 100, 100, Yep, it is uh, somewhere in the middle right here. And if I was to increase my count on my line spline to four or five or six, you see that it's sort of going from start to end and just continuing uh, way past the end here. And that's because mix is expecting a zero to one value, but instead we're getting a bunch of other values. And so if you want to try and like see what's happening inside of here, get a better sense of it, there's something called the data inspector. So you can right click on a port, choose data inspector, and this will give you all of the values that are happening each step al along the way. We can take a look at our range. Um, the port inspector will give you the very last value calculated, the data inspector again, all of these. So I want to turn you know, the zero through five into a zero through uh, one sort of floating point value. And to do that, I'm just going to take my uh, range and I'm going to divide it by count. And this is incorrect, but we'll, we'll see why in just a moment. And what we see is, well, it feels pretty close, but it's not quite there. And it gets more wrong the uh, lower count is. The higher count is, the closer it is to what it should be. And that's because uh, the final, well, we can take a look at these, uh, these values here. We only get up almost to a value of one. And uh, to make it correct, we just need to subtract one from the count. So I'm going to choose subtract. From my count, I'm going to subtract one. And I'm going to wire this into uh, my divide. And looking at my division or at my subtract, there's a sort of circle with a dot in it. And this indicates that the type of the port that is coming into it is, or the wire coming into it is different from the port. And that's because this is a, an integer and this is a float. So I need to change my data type from float to int. And now my subtraction is working fine. And what I like to do is just to, uh, name these things more explicitly. I'm just going to say count minus minus to indicate we're subtracting one here. And then uh, divide, I might add a comment under this. So I'm hitting command forward slash and saying uh, index ratio. And here I might say uh, iter indexes. And here I'm going to say collect point positions. And here I might be explicit and say uh, lerp between start and points based on index ratio. And so now I have got a simple um, spline that goes between A and B, start and end, depending on account. And that is uh, a pretty shaggy explanation, but this is how uh, ranges or sort of iteration works. How do we create an array based on that iteration and uh, how to build a simple user interface. So uh, the last thing that I want to cover, I mean, let me just make sure I've covered uh, all the stuff here. Don't reinvent the wheel, two points blind, iteration and looping, range ratio, mix and lerp. Great. Creating a custom UI we've started. Let's uh, clean up the UI a little bit. So I'm going to right click on my input here and choose edit resource. And now I've got the ability to tweak some things. So my starting position, I want to set to zero, zero, zero. And my end position, 
it's kind of up to you whether you want it to be a, a horizontal line by default or a, a line along Z by default or what have you. Um, I am going to, let's say, uh, let's have it go out along X by default, zero, zero. And you can adjust your, your step here. Count, I think by default should be two. And uh, if you want, you can add a UI separator just to you know reinforce that these are pretty different things. And um, there we go. Now, uh, again, on the topic of not reinventing the wheel, we could have t also taken that much simpler uh, two-point spline that we had before and just add a resample spline at the end and then adjust the count here in order to get uh, those points dynamically calculating for us. So lots of ways to skin a cat here. Um, I'm showing you the, the sort of lowest level ways of doing this in order to show off the, the range and assemble collection nodes. Um, last but not least, let's package this up as an asset. So I'm going to call this uh, line. And um, inside of here, I'm going to choose assets, convert to asset. And what I like to do is give it a version number, especially when I'm starting out, I start with experimental version numbers. So 0 0.1.0. I'm just following sort of uh, semantic versioning uh, here. In terms of database, um, when I'm initially working on a thing, I'm not sure if it's going to, you know, live to, to, to make it to other scenes or, or do much of anything. I just uh, build it into the database for the scene itself because that's very easy for me to share with someone else. And then I want to make sure that the category I line up with something like nodes, uh, geo spline, and uh, we get all of this. And if I now choose OK, uh, the node graph is gone. I've just got this right over here. And if I search for line, uh, the node operator GeoSpline right here allows me to bring in my new custom spline, which I can adjust and tweak to my heart's content. Uh, similarly, if I go over here to notes, for example, and add in a line, I can drag that in, connect it to the output, and I have got the ability to tweak these two points and create a sort of custom line segment here with a variable count. Um, oh, that is actually um, one other sort of uh, point for working with uh, assets is to always look at them not not just as an, an asset in the object manager, but also in the, the node editor. And in the node editor, I like to uh, keep things very tidy. So I'm going to choose to edit asset as group, and I'm going to uh, get rid of the count. And you may even elect to get rid of the start and imports by uh, selecting them and hitting delete, just so that they are sort of uh, hidden by default. Um, I'm going to reset my defaults here. I might call this line just in case. I'm going to dive in and go to asset save new version. And now it's 0.1.0. You generally want to do a full increment of the, the big version over here. If you've you know modified port, especially if you like delete a port or change the, the, the behavior really significantly where it would break older scenes, you want to do a major version update. If it's just adding a, a new feature that won't break backwards compatibility, you want to increment this middle number. And if you're just doing a little bug fix that doesn't really materially impact anything, you can just tweak this very last one over here on the right. Um, and uh, you can get up to very, very high numbers with this middle number. It's once you hit 1.0 that you need to start being careful and um, you know not breaking previous or future versions of your asset with the changes that you make. So um, saving that again, I've now got my line, which I can connect, and it doesn't have any extraneous points. And if you wanted to, to connect them, you could choose to command click and expand them out, wire something into them. So there you go. That is how you build your very own uh, simple line primitive uh, for use in yeah, any number of things.